What is up guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be talking about should you buy or avoid the EcoBoost Mustang. We're going to go over a lot of things in today's video. We're going to check out the performance. I'm going to tell you things I like and things I don't like about this car because I know a lot about this car considering I've owned it for since 2018 and 2023 now. So that makes it a lot of years. Now the first thing a cool guy thinks about before buying a car is the looks. The EcoBoost Mustang is definitely a good looking car which is the first reason why I bought it because I didn't know that it was a force I mean I knew it was a four-cylinder and then but I didn't think it was really a four-cylinder which kind of makes no sense now but moving on it's got all the little things that you need in an entry-level sports car it's got the grill with holes for airflow it's got the arches on the rear fenders and it's a coupe and coupes are always cool except infinities of course infinities are not cool even if they're coupe but for the most part this car does look aggressive it does look nice and the next most important thing is performance. Now, a lot of people look for performance, then looks, or some people look for looks and then performance. I look for both, if that makes sense. But if you look for both, this car is definitely not for you. So, as we all may know by now, and if, and if you have been subscribed to the channel for a long time, you know that I made a thousand videos about my car, and I always say it's a 2.3 liter inline four, 310 horsepower, turbo, rear wheel drive, six speed auto, boom, boom. Now, the numbers on paper do sound good, and compared to other cars, like the GTI and the BRZs, it's definitely a good car. But for you to better understand those numbers, we have to test out performance of the car, which we will in this video. But before we do, I have to talk to you guys about a few things just to keep you interested so you don't leave. Let me blabber on for another minute and then we will be testing out the performance of the car. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is how practical is the car? And when I say practical, I mean in terms of space. You do get a massive trunk that and you can pretty much fit anything inside of this trunk, okay? You can, you can, I mean, I've done it before where I fit myself in the trunk and if I manage to fit myself in the trunk, you get the idea. The cameraman is just doing weird things. Like, what does that mean? She's gonna say nothing. But you get a lot of trunk space and you can definitely, definitely fit a lot of things in there. Luggages, groceries, I mean, people if you want, and use if nice, funny you. But anyways, my favorite part of today's video the seats or how it how spacious it is on the inside which is not very but we're gonna try anyways and she's destroying everything all right whenever you feel like it madame if you've ever seen any of our videos you'd know that i've been in the back of this car a thousand times so now we make it a thousand one so you gotta put your foot in obviously and then you gotta just try so yeah, let me let me bring this seat back. It's very claustrophobic in the back and leg room is fine, headroom isn't. I am six foot tall. There's more space in, in a pack of gum than there is in the back of this car. Is there something else I can help with? Open the door. And moving on to the front seats where it's a little bit more human friendly. When you open the door, you are greeted with a seat, just like most other cars. But this seat is leather because this car is premium. I'm not poor. Now, in terms of the seats of this car, I never really had any issues with them uh, being uncomfortable. In fact, it's the other way around. I've always thought they're a little too comfortable. And, uh, you know, you'd want bucket seats or racing seats in what you think is a sports car. I can't afford buying the premium and bucket seats. It's one or the other. It turns out I am poor. My dad's watching this video. I don't want a disciplinary lecture later today about how I shouldn't say that stuff. But anyways, it's spacious up front and uh, the seats move forward and backwards you know, it's a little bit slow but it moves and here's the thing a lot of people have cars that don't move electronically because I guess their cars are not that good but but mine mine is my girlfriend just gave me the finger why would you do that what you don't even have a car you're worse than that <laughs> and that double fingers That's <laughs> but anyways <laughs> Let's move on to the interior. So now that we're inside of the car, it's your typical interior. You have your gauge cluster, which isn't really impressive. And then you have your infotainment system, which is actually quite nice. I like the sync screen. There's, there's a lot to do with it. It's responsive. It's somewhat reliable. I mean, it is reliable. Sometimes it, it, it just shuts off and it doesn't want to work, but you'd have to close the car and then try again. And when it feels better, it'll turn back on and it'll, it'll function quite normally. And then down there you have your cool buttons, you have you know your hazard light, traction, steering wheel feel and mode, which is driving modes. You have, I actually forgot what you have. You have normal sport plus track and snow wet. And then down here on your gear selector, you have what you get in also most other cars. You have park, reverse, neutral drive and sport, which is cool. And, uh, and something that not a lot of people know, if you put this car in sport and you downshift or upshift, 
you'll then be shifting manually. The car is not gonna shift for you, you're gonna be the one shifting. I think most of the sports cars are like that. So this makes this car a sports car. A few things I like and a few things I don't like about this car before we get out and launch it. And we're gonna talk about some of the things I don't like. I don't like the paint. The paint of this car in all of the Mustangs is just horrible. You'll discover dings and scratches every single day. Every single day I look at my car, there's a new scratch and my dad was using the car and whenever my dad uses my car, it always comes back with something wrong with it. I was an American, I just came back to Dubai and you know, my dad was using this car to just destroy it, which is not nice of him considering it's all I have in the world. Talk about fairness in households. It obviously doesn't exist in ours. But anyways, I don't like the brakes of this car. This car's braking is a little bit annoying. It's just, it's, I mean, it brakes hard, but it's just not grippy enough. When you step on the brakes, it's a little bit soft and the car feels like it's, it's heavy, which it really isn't all that heavy. It should be 1600 kilograms. And with my girlfriend in it, <laughs> It's 2,000 kilograms. All right, let's put that away. Anyways, and things I like about this car, I like a lot about this car. I've owned it for six years and I've said many times that I like the car, I love the car, it's my car, I love my car, and I truly do. And if you have been subscribed to the channel for long enough, you'd know that we've reviewed many, many cars, many of which are supercars, and also many of which are just normal day-to-day -day cars. And you know, it's always a good feeling after we're done filming a car, I just get in my car and I drive it around, and I'm never really feeling disappointed. I do really like this car, and in terms of its reliability, I haven't really faced any major issues. It, you know, yeah. I made a video or two talking about how, you know, I had some issues with the transmission, but that was a very quick and cheap fix. Well, it was cheap for me because my dad paid for it. So it was cheap, nonetheless. I actually think it was cheap, okay? I don't think it was all that expensive, but I like this car. I like what it has to offer. It's a great entry-level sports car and there isn't anything in the same class as this car that I would rather get. It's faster than most of the cheaper entry-level sports cars. This car is a good car. And if you are just looking to get started into the world of sports cars, it's, a, it's definitely a great fun. It's rear-wheel drive. You got 310 horsepower you know it's it's just it's got all the ingredients of fun things if you can afford a gt then definitely buy a gt right i'm not going to tell you no leave the gt and get the ecoboost you should definitely buy the gt over the ecoboost this car is perfect i love it it's great it's fun it's fast for the most part but now is the fun part where we go out and drive this car all right so we're gonna get out of here and we're gonna go somewhere nice. Here is pretty nice for, for unsupervised activities because I mean, you can't see much outside. So I can't imagine anybody seeing anything outside. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna launch it in normal and then we're gonna launch it in sport and we're gonna see. So we're gonna come to a full stop, which is right about now and brakes in, gas in and out we go. We're gonna reach 100 today and that's 100. You see, that wasn't all that long. It should be this much in normal drive mode. But beyond the 100, when we get back to it, we're, I mean, we're going, we're going fast. We're gonna put the car in Sport Plus now, and we're just gonna get a little bit more forward. All right. Let us come to a resting stop. It's the part where the Oh, you see the aggressive downshifts. It is a sports car, whether you like it or not. But anyways, foot on the brake, gas, and out we go. When GoPro decided to go... Oh, we passed 100 already. Well, I didn't see when we did, but we did. So it does go fast and, you know, it does go... It's occasionally fast in a straight line and handling is quite good. This is where I say that the normal seats are not comfortable because they just really don't hold you down in place. But this car handles really well and everything is flying around. <laughs> but we're not, which is good because you don't want to be flying around. It handles well. Sometimes it doesn't, but for the most part it does. You need to kind of find your, your comfort zone with this car and then you also need to find the comfort zone of the car where it's good enough with what you're doing and you're good enough with what it's doing as well. Man, give me some space, man. This is where it's good when you have a car like this because you can just get away from douchebags. Like that douchebag that was just behind me. But I hope this video has helped you decide whether this is a car you want to buy or not. And if you are going to go ahead and buy an EcoBoost Mustang, it's a good decision because it is a good car. 
and I promise you, you won't regret it. And yeah, if there's anything else you guys would like to know about the car, let me know down below in the comments and we'll, and we'll get it done for you guys. What are these houses? I've never seen these houses before. And yeah, that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And if you happen to have a nice car and you live in Dubai, comment down below and we'll get in touch with you and film your car. We won't be abusing it like we... Are we in the right place? And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And look at it, dog. Unbelievable. Get the out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys next video.